Okay, so on this next video, we're going to be diving into the thumbnail process and getting our initial composition set up. Um, there's a few things I didn't mention in the previous pro uh, video, but here's how I like to have my Photoshop set up. Um, I, over the years, Adobe has started to add more and more clutter to the UI, and so I want to close as many things as I can that are not necessary for me to be able to work. That means that I like to keep my layers open. And if you are not doing this, you should definitely want to open up your navigator from the drop down that's going to allow us to quickly be able to move around our image and more importantly, get a bird's eye view of how all these shapes are working together within our canvas. So I'm using the same canvas that I had just a moment ago. Um, and I've got my reference images over here to the right hand side just for general shapes is really kind of what I'm looking at at this stage. And then I've gone through, copied my background layer, shrunk it down and created four little canvases in here for me to be able to start thumbnailing on. I've got a layer called thumbnails. I've got a blue um, color here at first to be able to start doing my line art. Again, this will just help it pop quite a bit on these darker gray canvases. And then there's a few setups with this initial brush right out of the gate that I want to do. So I'm not going to use my fuzzy brush. That's really just going to be for shading and gradients and things like that. For this thumbnail stage, we're not importing any of those brush packs. I'm just going to use the hard round brush and I want to set it up just a little bit differently. So when I go into my brush properties, over here on the right hand side, brush settings. Come on, buddy. There we go, brush settings. I want to set up my shape dynamics. So I want to make sure that my shape dynamic is set to pin pressure. And then for this one, I want to also mess with the transfer option. So I'm going to turn that on so that I get a nice. Um, fuzzy brush. There it goes. Uh, so the harder that I press, the darker the line's going to be. The lighter I press, the lighter the line's going to be. When I'm doing these initial concepts, I don't want to get too stuck with a solid brush color. I want to be able to build my line work up so that I have plenty of room for my ideas to be able to breathe and develop without going in 100% opacity at first. Alrighty, now let's get into the thumbnails that we've got our brushes set up and I'm going to start mm, fairly large with, uh, with my brush size in here. I don't want to get too committed to, you know, small little details and I'm really just looking to brush in and build in some particular shapes. So over here on the side, I really like, like I said, these big old kind of shapes that are moving up. I've already got in my head that I want to go through and create maybe like a snake. Sculpture or a statue um, that's been left to time. So we're going to create the snake's head up here in this section. This is where I want a lot of the light to hit and that'll be my snake's face uh, with its body kind of curling up through the scene and we want to see that over time the trees have started to overtake it and grow up in between it so let's give a nice massive tree right here again i'm thinking about my root forms i don't want um you know these to be completely straight and i want the branches to have started to move around this snake as well so it's going to have lots of moss and other things having grown on it and i want to just pass all types of forms around this thing as time has kind of grown over this snake so that'll work pretty well for me i've got two good trees there We've got the body, which is taking up a lot of our background. We can have more trees that have started to kind of swamp and grow over the top of it. We've got a little bit of ground that's showing up here, not too much. So that's pretty cool for having an initial composition to be able to work through. I definitely like that main tree form that's coming up right in the very middle of the, uh, the snake itself. And that could work pretty good. So with our next one in here, um, I like the idea of trying to incorporate some type of waterfall within this space as well. So let's, um, and I'm thinking about how I'm moving the viewer's eye. I'll do the second one and then I'll do a breakdown real quick for how I envision the, uh, 
the flow of the composition. So right now I'm just sort of creating something that's moving the viewer's eye down that way. And let's get a nice big old tree form that's gonna hang off the top of here. That'll give me something to drape a whole bunch of different um, vines and other types of stuff. We can have another big old tree that's growing right up on the side and some smaller ones that are filling in in the back here. So now we've got a nice cliff shape that we've described. Uh, I can put another tree that's starting to come up right in the front with lots of different roots that are taking over. Maybe one other little branch that's coming off of it that I can put some vines and plants on within that section. I've got a nice rocky surface here and I'm sort of looking at this stuff uh, in the bottom right hand side uh, for my reference images for what that's going to feel like. So if we want to include some type of waterfall, again, we've got our big old structure that we need to create our ancient ruins that have got to go in here somehow. So I've got a nice pocket of composition that I'm creating over on this one. And let's think about that giant waterfall off in the background. So there's our waterfall. Let's give it a nice little tree line that's coming around. There we go. So we'll have a whole bunch of trees. Maybe a little bit of light is starting to show up here. Won't really be able to see too much of the top of it. And then as it starts to roar down, um, we're going to have a pool somewhere at the base of this waterfall. We can continue to make it go down even further if we want. And that's a pretty good position for that stair case to be able to place it and then we can put the ruins uh, back over here. So for this one, I still like the idea of doing a snake. So what if we have the form of the snake sort of curled up and around the, uh, the waterfall. I think that's pretty cool. So if it's sort of in like a relaxed position so it breaks the waterfall or maybe the water is starting to pour over the edge of the snake into the pool on its body and then down uh, and it's made of stone that can look pretty neat as it starts to arrive down we want to make sure that we've got a sense of scale so there's going to be all types of bushes and other tree forms that have started to grow up in front of it that's a little bit more natural so that's giving us a nice vertical line that matches up with the waterfall and then we've got this left hand side that i want to continue to encircle so this is going to be dark right under here, like there's a cliff face that's been built into. And so let's go ahead and, yeah, just use that same sort of rocky formation here at the front to block in the front of our landscape. And then we can have our character stand in the lower left-hand side to help give us a sense of scale. It looks like absolute gibberish when we look at it, but my thoughts are in order and that one's working pretty good. So the reason why you want to create uh, four of these different thumbnails is because the compositions are just going to continue to improve with each one of them. Uh, so same deal here. Let's go ahead and let's try really bringing that snake structure to the foreground. Okay, so this way, um, this is where we're going to start the viewer, maybe up in the tree line, right? So we can have some trees, forms that are starting to show up here right around the top of the snake as if they're kind of looking down a cliff and then actually uh, looking down onto it as it starts to wind down. So we'll put sort of a cliff shape here at the top and this is like looking down into a valley. So that means we can put lots of different foliage, vines and other things that are starting to come off the edge of it and then we'll put some more tree forms right here and around it that looks pretty good to me so some on the ground down there and what's going on behind this snake that's going to be interesting well let's give it some other big rocks and things like that that we can drop some plants on again constantly trying to think about how we can break up the horizon for this and it's going to be pretty dark underneath this section and we want lots of different plants that are starting to grow in on it right there. So that's pretty unique, having it uh, drop in from sort of a top-down view as if the character is looking over the top of the cliff. And then, you know, we can fill this in with just some grass and stuff like that. Here's kind of a cool rule to talk to you guys about. So there's this idea of 70-30 within your composition. So 30% of your composition should be where all the detail lies and what it is that you're trying to bring the viewer's attention to. Whereas the other 70% of your piece is going to be, well, less visually interesting or not as bright. And that's going to allow you to be able to, um, you know, 
direct the viewer's eye and focus. So let's go in and let's just draw this circle here. So let's represent that this circle right here is like 30% of this entire canvas. The other 70% can be really busy and then I can allow this to be able to stay smooth at the end of my composition. So we'll make that the, uh, the snake. Okay, and this is going to have all types of scales and details and little, you know, um, carvings going on in on the inside of it. And then we can drop the back of the snake over here. Let's throw in some boulders. That'll be shaded. This is where the light's going to occur. Put in some bushes over here in the back. And so what I want to do now is since that snake is existing on its on this particular ground plane I want to try and break up that ground plane as much as I can so that I'm getting a bunch of different scales <laughs> and it looks like I'm getting a little bit of lag while I'm starting to draw this one so this is probably my least favorite of the compositions but it's still good to be able to just explore it all the way I think the one that's going to win is going to be the snake and the waterfall so let me go ahead and pause this video here and we're going to blow this video up in the next one and really start uh, blocking in my colors and getting the initial line work for developing that piece out further. So I hope this has been useful for you for how to think about concepting, thumbnail, uh, image flow, and how we're directing the user's, the viewer's eyes through the piece. Okay, stay tuned for the next one.